So in this series of six videos, I'm going to show you how I've created these different text effects. I'm going to be starting with the impact font and the page size I'm using is A4. If you want to get similar results with the different settings, then you need to be working at the same scale. So let's get started. Let's move down to the next one. So the next one, we've got this kind of psychedelic pattern on our text. So the way I've done this is if we move over to the side, I'm going to come up, I'm going to get my um, Bezier tool. So I'm going to keep B spline on. I want to put a shape on our on our stroke. So at the moment it's set to none. I want to change this to triangle in. So now I'm just going to draw a line down here where we've got the B spline on. It's going to create a nice smooth curve. So I'm going to press enter to complete my stroke. So at the moment, our alpha channel is um, not completely opaque, so I'm going to make that completely opaque. Now, for some reason, it's also included the fill color on the actual normal path as well as in my triangle. One way to sort this out is if we just come up, get the selection tool. We can press Control D to duplicate it. We drag this off to the side. It usually gets rid of that issue. So I can come back to the original one. We just press Delete to get rid of that. And we're left with this nice wavy triangle. So what I want to do with this triangle now is rotate it and I want to use rotate copies. So it's a path effect we're going to use to create this pattern. So if we come over to path, we can come down to path effects. And you can see what path effects we've already got on here. So we've got the B spline, which gives us the um, curved line and we've got power stroke. Power stroke is what, what's used to create this triangle. So we want to add another effect to this. So we're going to click on the plus and we want to choose uh, rotate copies, this one down here. So I'm going to click on that and that just creates a rotated group of copies. So I think the default is six down here. So we want to adjust this. So we're going to change to the nodes tool. And now we can see all the nodes. So on here we can see we've got two sets of nodes. We've got this original path nodes and we've got the handles that we've got in the center, which are for the rotate copies. So what we can do with this, if we come in and get hold of the center handle, we can drag that and align these how we want them. So I want these to be touching in the middle. So I think that's pretty close. So we wanna add more copies, just so that it fills this out a little bit more and we've got less um, open space. So we can just come over and we can click on our number of copies until our pattern's as dense as we want it. What I might do is just adjust this slightly so we can go back to our original path. I'm going to click on this node and I'm going to drag it in a bit just to lessen that effect that we had there. So again, I might get away with a couple more. So I think I'm happy with that design. So before we move on, I just wanted to show you a couple of things to do with the path effects. Each path effect has its own controls and we can determine which controls we can use. If, if we come up to our path effects dialog box on the right hand side, we've got B spline, power stroke, which is the triangle effect, and we've got the rotate copies. So with rotate copies selected, we can see our handles in the middle, which is how we can adjust the layout of our shapes. If we now click on power stroke, you'll see we get a little pink handle up the top here. Now this handle is for scaling and adjusting the shape of our power stroke. So we can adjust this to wherever we want. We can press Ctrl Z if we want to put it back to exactly how it was. And B spline, if we go to B spline, all we get to see is our path coming down. So now we've created our pattern, we need to combine it with our letters to create our new text effect. With the path effects applied, we can use Boolean operators such as union, difference, intersection, we can use it to combine our letters straight off, but just out of force of habit, I usually just convert mine to a path beforehand. So the way we're gonna turn this into a path in its own right is to come up to path, and we're gonna click on object to path. And that just turns it into a nice path for us. So now we can use our Boolean operators to combine it with our letters. So at the moment, this, this is far too big for what we want. So I'm gonna get my selection tool, I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions so we don't warp it out of shape and I'm just going to drag it down till it's a similar size to the letters. 
about so big. Then we can make a couple of copies. So I'm going to press Control D once, Control D twice. So now we've got three copies of the same design. I'm going to drag a box over all of them so we can change the color. I'll change it to red. This way then, if we click off, this way when I drag it over, we can actually see what we've got. So you can see the A underneath. So we can position it however we want it. So we're going to go there. If you want to select an object that's underneath the top object, what you can do is hold down Alt. Now, when we click on it again, it cycles through the different objects. So at the moment, this text is a single text box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this to a path. So with the text selected, I'm going to come up to path and down to object to path. When we use object to path to convert text, it actually creates a group of separate paths. So what we need to do now is come up and click on the ungroup. We can click off. We can click on our pattern. I'm going to hold down Alt again so we can select the A underneath. Then I'm going to hold down Shift so we can select our pattern on top. So now we've got both selected. We can come up to Path and down to Intersection. And that will give us our pattern. So then again we can come over. We can drag over one of these. We can put it somewhere a little bit different this time. Perhaps down the bottom. Um, I'm going to hold down Alt so I can select the B underneath. Then I'm going to hold down Shift so I can select the pattern on top. So we've got both selected. So then we can come up to Path and down to Intersection. And finally, we just need to do the C. So we put it here. We hold down our Alt, select the C underneath, hold down the Shift, select the pattern on top. With them both selected, we can come up to Path and we can come down to Intersection. And then we've created our pattern on there. I can't remember what colors I did before. What have we got? Red. So if we select our A, we can come down, give it a red. Select the B, we give it a. We can come down, give it a blue. What were we that one? And C, we can give it a green color. Now, of course, you can just move these to create our design, similar to what we've got over the other side. So that's our text complete. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.